Oh, never mind. We have nine. My bad, Jonathan. Thanks for catching that. Oh, we have 10 Adams in the attendees. Can we promote Adam? Okay, now we have 10. Uh, making the lives good? Cool. Oh, the face is giving no, but I can't. <laughs> is, it, is it a yes? Is it a no? Yeah, okay. Cool. I will go ahead, call this meeting to order at 7.03. Thank you all for being here. Um, Happy week 10. I know it's almost final, so definitely wishing y'all the best of luck. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with the agenda. Are there any amendments to the agenda for today? Eva. Can we please strike uh, GROW's allocations? Yep. Then Jenna's. Can we strike the SWC programming fund? Yep. Are there any other amendments for today. Going once, going twice. Okay. Um, sorry, Sujana. Sorry. Um, can we please strike TGMF allocations? Okay. Thank you. And then Ying. Can I also strike SFS? Sounds good. Anybody else? Okay. With that, can a I have a motion on the agenda? Sujana? I don't know why I raised my hand, um, but I move to approve the agenda for um the December fifth ESAC meeting. Second. Okay, Sujana motions. Gabby seconds. All in favor, please raise your hands. Okay, please lower your hands. All against, please raise your hands. All abstaining, please raise your hands. We have a 10 to 0 to 0 vote. The agenda is approved. Thank you all so much. Okay, um, now we'll go into approval of the minutes. Um, so we have to approve the minutes from November 21st and November 28th. So those are going to have to be two separate um, votes. So can I get a motion for November 21st minutes? I motion to approve the November 21st, 2023 minutes. I second. Megan, motion, Jonathan seconds. All in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, please lower your hands. All against, please raise your hands. All abstaining, please raise your hands. With a 10 to 0 to 0 vote, the November 21st, 2023 minutes are approved. Now we will need a motion for November 28th. I motion to approve the USAC meeting minutes from November 28th, 2023. Make your motions, can I have a second? Second. All right, make a motion to John a second. All in favor, please raise your hands. Okay, please lay your hands. All against, please raise your hands. All abstaining, please raise your hands. We did a 10 to 0 to 0 vote there. The um, minutes from November 28th are approved. Thank you all so much. All right, now we'll be going into public comment. So just a reminder with public comments, um, it is two minutes Two minutes per speaker, and the speaker can only speak once. Remember, challenge idea is not individuals, gender inclusive and respectful language. Freedom of speech does not mean freedom from accountability. And then no dehumanizing language. With that, we're going to start public comment. Please raise your hands, and we will go ahead and call on you if you're here for public comment. Okay. Reminder, if you're here for public comment, please raise your hands. Going once, going twice. With that, we are closing public comment at 7.07 .07 p.m.
as no hands are raised, or is that just my screen? Okay, no hands are raised. All right, sounds good. Now I'll be going into our next thing of tonight, funding. Okay, starting with capital contingency, is Lucy here? Yes. Yes, I'm so sorry. Uh, could I strike capital contingency? I'm so sorry. Um, uh, if not, it's we'll just say there's not allocated. So yeah. Okay, perfect. Be Thank you so much. And then okay. for contingency programming as well. Uh, for contingency this week, we had a total programming request of twenty one thousand two hundred fifty eight dollars and fifty seven cents, and we recommend an allocation of four thousand one hundred twenty nine dollars and thirty three cents for 14 non-USAC entity and one USAC entity related events. Um, I'll also put this in the chat um, and happy to answer any questions. All of this is also on the universal allocation sheet um, linked on the agenda, um, but I'm pasting it in the chat right now. Okay, thank you. Can we have a motion? I move to approve the contingency programming of uh, $4,129.33 to 14 non-USAC entities and to one USAC entity. Three seconds. Second. All right, Eva motions, Jonathan seconds, all in favor, please use your hands. Okay, please all your hands. All against, please raise your hands. All standing, please raise your hands. All right, with a 10 to zero to one vote, um, that is approved. Thank you. Now moving to Burn Advocacy Grant, Eva. Eva, if you're talking, you're muted. Oh, sorry. Um, for the Bruin Advocacy Grant, uh, we have um, a total allocation of $3,477 to three non-USAC entities. And I'll type that right now. Okay. Is there any opposition? Our one's going twice. All right, that is approved. Thank you. ASRF allocation, Sujana? Um, yes, this week AC alloc or yeah, AC would like to allocate five hundred dollars to one non USAC entity. Okay. Is there any opposition? All right, that was approved. Thank you. And then moving to ARC, um, uh, Arc. Sorry, Alicia. Hi. Could you repeat that? Are there any ARC allocations for this week? Yes, um, we had $2,550 to two non-USAC entities, and I'll put it in the chat right now. Thank you. Is there any opposition? OK, that's approved. Now moving to TGIF, Evan. I don't think Evan is here. Oh. Okay. Is there a proxy for Evan in the attendees by any chance? If so, if you are the pro proxy, please raise your hand. Okay, we'll go ahead and skip that. And then bot allocation. Sarah, were there any this week? Is Sarah in the attendees? I don't believe Sarah is here either. Got it. Okay, skipping that as well. So as for right now, there are no allocations to either of those. Now moving into special presentations, we have ASUCLA um, BOD updates. And then let's go ahead and promote those votes that are in attendance. Please raise your hand so we can promote you if they haven't been already. Yeah, we're already in here, Naomi. Thank you, though. <laughs> You're good. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Um, this is going to be, hopefully, I'm not new to you guys. Um, I'm Ali. I'm the current chair for the board of directors, and he is also here. Um, she's the chair for the services committee, 
on the board and we just wanted to present some updates um, for December. Um, some background information from the November updates would be really helpful. So if you have that pulled up from the last meeting, um, that could be helpful, but I'll try to run through some of these um, pretty quickly. Um, so starting off again with CalFresh, um, as you guys know, it's known as the federal, um, it's federally known as the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program or SNAP, and that provides monthly food benefits to individuals and families with low income and provides economic benefit to the communities. Um, CalFresh is the largest program in California and provides an essential safety um, hunger net for the community. CalFresh is federally mandated and in California is state supervised and county operated. Each location has to be independently approved by the USDA, which is the federal agency that's responsible for authorizing CalFresh. Um, in support of our CalFresh initiative, ASUCLA is looking towards expanding into the downtown uh, Los Angeles location with a market that will accept CalFresh. Um, we hope by accepting CalFresh at that location that we're able to expand um, food accessibility to the greater Los Angeles community. Um, CalFresh is also being expanded into the Health Sciences Store and Louvelle. So really exciting updates on the CalFresh side. Um, Hia, if you want to take over for the next bullet point. Yes. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Hia. I also serve on the ASUCLA board. And as I said, I'm the chair of the services committee. I hope you guys can hear me. Let me know if you can't. But uh, moving to the next point is student programming. Uh, we continue to host student programming in Ackerman Union, as reported in last month's meeting presentation. And uh, students are also able to take part in our $5 Fridays program, which helps with more affordable food options. So far, it's been very popular. We've processed over 4,300 transactions on this program already. So yeah, I'll hand it back over to Ellie. Perfect. Um, in addition to the communication methods that we talked about last month, so the newsletter, um, as well as our entities meeting, the undergrad board members, along with the chair of the ad hoc committee, all met with some USAC officers in order to discuss um, student needs and ultimately how ASUCLA can support these goals along with USAC. And we plan to continue working in collaboration with USAC to uh, meet some of those student needs that we talked about. Here, I'll pass it back to you for the last point. Yes. Uh, thank you, Ali. Um, the last thing is about uh, housing and dining. So as we all pretty much know by now, all the ASU City restaurants on campus, uh, all locations, they accept the meal swipes that we use Um for housing. Uh, so all students can utilize their meal plans. ASUCLA is also working with housing and dining to increase the value of these swipes. So yeah, that's all from us. Megan, I'll send you um, the copy of the little like blurb, kind of like what we did for November. Um, so I'll email you that, but that's it from us. Um, any questions? Yeah, any questions? Thank you so much. Any questions from council members? Okay, Megan, sorry, my bad. Didn't see your hand. Um, I guess my only question would be um, with the off campus real plans, like, are there, is there any update on that? Um, yeah, so I did follow up with um, management on that, and I know that there, there's like a pilot program being worked on right now. Um, we don't I don't think we have a lot to do with that at the moment. So it's still kind of up in the air. I'll see what else I can gather in terms of information. And I'll put that in the um, document that I'm going to send you, Megan, if I get anything else. But um, other than that, I don't really have any updates on that end. And then I had a second question. I know um, Corey was talking about raising like the limit of um, like a swipe by $1 from $9 to like $10. Um, so were there any like successful like updates on that as well? Yeah, we're still working with housing on that. <laughs> um, and once we get a response, we'll let you guys know in, in our updates. Um, but right now we're still kind of working with housing and dining to kind of see what we can do about that. Thank you. Okay. And I'll also oh, send an article. Ooh, my bad, sorry. Go oh, ahead. Sorry. I wanted to ask, um, semi-related to the work that you all do for ASUCLA, I kind of want to ask who 
does like mer like the ideas for the merchandise that's sold at the UCLA store. That's because um, I've heard some ideas from students and I, I would like to have, for them to have some sort of forum of sharing those potential ideas for UCLA, like merchandise. I'm not sure if that's within your realm or your work or not. Um, Ali, if you have any sort of insight about that. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for asking. I think we definitely do have realm in terms of like what we can put together. Um, we've done like the Maui shirts um, to support the Maui wildfires. So we definitely have some sort of like um, autonomy on that end of like creating our own merch. Um, I definitely can put you in contact with um, the appropriate like person on the management team to kind of see what we can do about that um, but yeah thank you so much for bringing that up yeah thank you so much I greatly appreciate that okay. awesome uh, I'm gonna forward um, in the slack as well an article that I found about the off-campus um, meal plan that's supposed to be piloted next quarter so um, just so uh, everyone's on the same page in that regard um, but yeah, thank you both for your time. I really appreciate y'all coming out. Um, definitely love it. And yeah, we will hope you all have good finals as well. And we'll see you next time. Thank you guys so much. See you guys next month. Okay. Next, we have the other special presentation is from CalPER, their quarterly update. So yeah, we'll go ahead and invite them folks. And I guess we'll just need people to raise their hand or... I think Hi, Megan. I'm sorry. There's that. one more person. Oh, uh, her name's great. Natalie. Yeah, you're <laughs> good. I'm sorry. Yay! Thank you. Um. Wait here. Should wait? Should we like uh share the slides or? Um, if you can, I think I've changed the settings so that um anyone can share their screen. Okay, here one sec. Okay, sorry. Natalie's gonna share. I'm on my phone. I realized I don't know how to share slides on the phone. Um, but. I will start anyway, because we don't need the slides yet. But um, okay, well, anyway. Um, but thank you guys for listening to our presentation. Um, we, every quarter, or at least twice a year, do a update presentation for you all on what CalPERC has done. Um, this is part of our contract with UCLA, um, just so you guys know what's going on. Um, I know I come do updates in public comment, but this is a little bit more professional. Um, but we'll try to keep it quick. Um, yeah, Natalie, I can pass it to you. I'm sorry, we're, we're having tech issues, but she's going to come over here. <laughs> okay can you hear me hopefully you can hear me uh we want to quickly start out by just doing a quick overview of our organization all right so calperic stands for the california public interest research group we were started by students in the 70s who just wanted to have a say in local statewide and national politics they basically pulled the resources together to hire a staff of organizers to help train them on how to run effective grassroots campaigns. Uh, we have decades of victories, including our mobilization of thousands of students to commit our state to 100% clean, clean electricity by 2045. And most recently, we helped pass AB 363 to ban the commercial use of bee killing pesticides in California. Um, really, really excited about that. We worked super hard lobbying. Um, so really glad that passed. Uh, but students have been at the forefront of social change throughout history, from civil rights to protecting the environment, all because young people have a lot, of, lot at stake and have the vision and drive to actually push for a better future. Um, but we have over 30,000 UC student members who choose to add a $10 CalPERG activity fee to their tuition 
And this basically gives us the ability to work for the public interest in the long term. Um, so that's a little bit about us. But in California, we are a statewide organization. We have eight chapters across the UC system, as well as chapters in states across the country. We are governed by a statewide board of directors made up of students from each chapter who get to make real decisions about the organization as a whole. We vote on a budget. We decide our statewide lead campaign, as well as approve any new campaigns that students want to run. You can totally come up with a campaign. And if the board approves it, then you're good to go. Uh, but we also do have a statewide executive committee where six students are elected from the board of directors who help to drive statewide priorities. Our very own Clara is elected statewide board chair for the state this year, and I think also last year. <laughs> and then next I'll pass it to Lucy. Hey guys, so these are just some fun stats for us this year. So this is just at UCLA. We've had 150 volunteers, 30 interns. We've educated 8.7 thousand students through class presentations, and we have over 16,000 students on our email list. And if we go to the next slide. So as you probably know, we're funded through a $10 per term fee that students can opt into adding to their tuition. This funding is what gives us the political power, staff training, and resources to win big campaigns for the environment and other campaigns that we work on. We also have a contract with university that says we need to sign up at least 10% of the student population to be dues-paying members to show sufficient enough support for our program to even exist. So this quarter, we signed up 1,300 new members, which puts us at 12% of the student population. In addition to the funding, we educated thousands of students on our clean energy campaign and collected tons of petitions in support. And with that, we're going to go through the campaigns we ran this quarter and how they went. So I will pass it along. Yay, thank you. Um, well, our first campaign, which is our lead campaign, is our 100% clean energy campaign. Um, obviously, climate change is one of the biggest issues that we face today. Um, it's especially important to people our age. And one of the biggest factors contributing to climate change is fossil fuel use. So it's really critical that we move away from dirty energy and towards renewable sources. Um, so a really powerful way we can tackle that is at our very own campus. Um, at UCLA, 85% of our energy use comes from a natural gas power plant on campus. Um, so only 15% um, is coming from uh, electricity from LA, which can be clean. Um, but this year, the university is doing a decarbonization study to set the path towards clean energy at UCLA. Um, so we're doing a lot of outreach to make sure that the student perspective is represented as part of that process. Um, and encouraging the university to adopt the fastest feasible timeline as discovered by the study. Um, so while it's ongoing, uh, right now we're calling for an ambitious timeline of 100% renewable energy by 2035. Um, and we've done a lot of work on this campaign over the past quarter. Um, the top line number is 1,700 petition signatures, um, but we've done a lot of work um, with the decarbonization task force and uh, Nareet Katz, the sustainability director. Um, so all of that has been exciting. Um, also, we are having a resolution later on. So you'll hear about that, but it's a chance for you guys to participate in the process. Um, and next we'll do new voters. The campaign that we've been running this quarter is the new voters project. And this is one of the campaigns that we have the longest track record for since it began all the way back in 1984. And it's actually the oldest and the largest nonpartisan youth voter mobilization campaign in the country. We run this campaign whenever there's going to be a midterm or a presidential election. And the problem that inspired this campaign was the fact that even though young people are extremely passionate and hold strong beliefs about the way they think the world should be, 
they don't vote in elections at nearly the same rate as older generations, which means that they don't get the opportunity to have their voice heard or to support the representatives that best match their viewpoints and values. The solution that the New Voters Project implements is to increase visibility around voting and elections on campus and to increase voter registrations through building coalitions with many student organizations and trying to make it easier and more accessible to vote by institutionalizing voting at UCLA. And for the 2020 presidential election, we helped register 10,000 students and we were able to reach 80,000 students in our Get Out to Vote campaign. So for this year, our campaign goal is for 80% of UCLA students to vote in the 2024 presidential election. Awesome. So I will be talking about our Save Our Seas campaign. Um, you guys might be familiar with this one because we um, also ran it last year. So the problem here is that we recognize that the oceans are really deeply important, especially in California, where we have such an extensive coastline. The ocean contains an abundance of wildlife and produces at least half of the oxygen we breathe. But there are a variety of threats to our oceans, such as climate change, plastic pollution, and with the most direct uh, threats being offshore drilling and commercial overfishing. So the mission of our campaign is to stop this from happening. California has been a leader in marine protections. Um, 10 years ago, we created a network of marine protected areas to conserve the most important and vulnerable habitats on California's coast. These protected areas are zones that are set aside free from human disturbances, like I mentioned before about offshore oil drilling and commercial overfishing, and they allow marine ecosystems to regenerate. So this was a great start, but it isn't sufficient. Globally, our experts have declared a goal to protect 30% of the oceans by 2030, but California currently only has 12% of the coastline under sufficient protections. So our objective this year is to strengthen the existing locations protections and increase other MPAs uh, to, include more import to include important kelp forests that are nearby. This is not the easiest thing to do because while MPAs have a proven track record, their implementation still provokes very stiff opposition from commercial and recreational fishing interests. However, we're partnered with another nonprofit, Environment California, that are submitting science-backed proposals to reach our goal. I think they've actually already submitted them for review. And we're garnering the support needed to pass their proposals through legislation. So right now, the Fish and Wildlife Department has been conducting a review of how MPAs have performed over the last 10 years, and they're making decisions as to whether or not they want to increase protections. Initially, they were supposed to meet last March to discuss this, but their discussions will now be happening in the early new year in 2024, and the decisions will be made next June. So they actually extended that timeline quite a bit. Um, so far, we have collected over 2,500 petition signatures. We have four media hits. Um, we participated in Ocean's Day in Sacramento and will do so again this year specifically on this issue. We've held many events um, last year and this year, like, for example, the Ocean's Carnival collected almost 200 photo petitions. We've submitted over 50 public comments to the Fish and Game Commission, and we're hosting a press tour at a suggested MPA location next week. So hopefully that'll get another media hit. And I will pass it on to Owen. Great, thanks, Lucy. Um, so my name is Owen. I'm coordinating the Hunger and Homelessness Campaign at CalPerg uh, this quarter. Um, so basically, the problem that we're trying to address with this campaign uh, is pretty straightforward, right? No one should have to argue, or sorry, no one should have to worry about whether they're going to have food on their plate or a roof over their head. Um, but unfortunately, hunger and homelessness, uh, these are really widespread, widespread issues issues that affect a lot of people. Um, Pre-pandemic, around 30% uh, of all college students actually reported facing food insecurity, um, which as a result of the pandemic has only worsened uh, with low income and other vulnerable students particularly affected. Um, and so in order to kind of, um, you know, lighten this burden a little bit, we're going to try and hold service events, fundraise money, and spread awareness and education about these uh, issues and resources available to people who need them. Uh, and so in order to kind of do this, we're going to be following the safe strategy when we're uh, thinking about planning events. 
Um, and so what that kind of pertains to is uh, service, advocacy, fundraising, education, and engagement uh, in order to get these goal, um, reach our goals of increasing visibility of these issues, volunteering over 300 service hours, and raising a total of $1,000 in support of local shelters and food banks. Um, and so particularly why right now this is such a huge issue, um, kind of like I stated, uh, it's even more of a priority um, after many students have faced unemployment and similar issues as a, re as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, right now, where we're at, um, we've raised over $100, we volunteered over 200 service hours, and we donated over 400 uh, total food items to CPO and uh, to some other uh, off-campus organizations as well, um, which includes sandwiches from our PB&J making table, which is pictured there, uh, and then also cans and boxes of food from our canned food drives uh, in front of Ralph's. And then uh, we've also been in contact with other organizations, both on and off campus, uh, that work to address food and housing insecurity um, in order to hopefully collaborate in the future winter and spring quarters. Um, and so with that said, I'll go ahead and uh, let Kate talk about the fast fashion campaign. Hi, uh, thanks so. And Hi everyone, uh, I'm Kate. I am not the coordinator of the fast fashion campaign, but I am very involved with it. Um, and it is brand new, so but most of you are probably aware of the problem of fast fashion. So fast fashion has become exponentially more prevalent in the past 10 years. You may have noticed companies like Shein, Forever 21, H&M are incredibly fast at creating new trendy products. Uh, oftentimes they produce these products so quickly that they actually don't even have the time to sell them. And a large majority of these brand new clothes literally wind up in incinerators, landfills, um, and they don't actually wind up in uh, recycling centers the way that a lot of people think they are. A lot of times when people recycle their clothes, they think that they're doing something altogether altruistic, but most of those clothes actually wind up in landfills. Um, the fast fashion industry has really made a lot of money, um, essentially making clothes last less and less time. So they say in the past 15 years, clothes last on average 30% less time, which means that you have to buy clothes more frequently. Um, but also, if fast fashion, just as per perspective, if fast fashion was like a country, if fast fashion was a country, they produce more carbon than any other country in the EU. So they'd be like, they're, they're really bad. And actually, they also make more carbon than private aviation and domestic shipping, which is probably surprising because fast fashion doesn't really seem like a major carbon producer, but it really is. Uh, because it's so much manufacturing and because so much of clothing these days is made from polyester blends, which is essentially just plastic. Um, so the solution is really to just hold these companies accountable because they they can. <laughs> they don't need to overproduce their clothing. They could use more um, appropriate, uh, essentially, like plans. Um, but it's just not you know, right now, an economic interest to them. Unfortunately, because college students are the primary uh, target demographic for their products, it does uh, influence their decision making if we can mobilize enough of this target demographic um, to say, hey, like, we're not okay with these practices, you can do better, we're going to make you do better, please stop burning your clothing at least. Um, so that's why we're calling on Forever 21 to be a leader in the fashion industry publicly commit to not trashing or burning unsold clothes and finding some other solution. I'm sure we can do something else with these clothes. Um, so yeah, I also, uh, well, I'm not also, I will also be presenting about the Palisbury's Blue Butterfly Initiative, which is a brand new campaign we started this fall. Um, there we go. So over the years, urban development has pretty much destroyed the natural habitat of the Palisbury's Blue Butterfly. Uh, the Palisbury's Blue Butterfly pretty much has the strongest claim to being the rarest butterfly in the entire world. It is only about the size of a nickel. It lives for five days as a butterfly and it only reproduces on one single plant that grows in one place on earth uh, that just happens to be in Palos Verdes. So now that UCLA has purchased 24 acres in Palos Verdes, the new South Bay satellite campus, I got the great idea that because we have this opportunity, we should therefore take it to not just take this space and turn it into any other academic space, but we really have an opportunity opportunity to do something really special. Um, and I really, um, my dream obviously was to save the Palace Breeze Blue Butterfly from extinction because currently it only exists essentially in captivity because they're just breeding it um, essentially in captivity. They try to release them and they don't typically survive because there's just so little bit of habitat left. Um, and so really the goal of this campaign was to get UCLA committed to 100% native plants on their entire satellite campus. 
And I was so ready to get like 10,000 petition signatures and like uh, do a rally and get like sign-ons from professors. And I had a meeting with Nareet Katz and she was like, we already are doing this. We're a hundred percent. We like are already completely on board. It's in our landscape plan. And I was like, well, there goes my campaign. But, <laughs> um, but I also met with Vice Chancellor Gordon and I was, uh, I also not met with any um, friction there, which was kind of frustrating because I was like, why isn't anyone stopping me? But right now it seems like everybody is on board, which is amazing. I'm very happy about that. But I also know that their support, while like super great, I love that, um, isn't necessarily codifying any of our goals. And we definitely haven't won our campaign. So we're kind of in a structuring process of figuring out the future of our campaign strategy. Uh, right now, it seems like we do have a lot of support from the campus, but we definitely have yet to legally or formally uh, uh, actually achieve our goals. Um, and that would be obviously to get the campus committed to 100% native plants and making those native plants, specifically the uh, loco weed, which is like the plant that this butterfly needs to reproduce. So yeah, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Um but yeah, that's our presentation. Uh, uh, to reiterate, this is like part of our contract with uh, the university that we update you guys at the end of each uh, term so that you know what we're doing. Um, but yeah, we're excited to continue making change. I'm sorry, we have so many campaigns this quarter. That took a, a hot second to get through. Um, but we're really excited to keep working on all of these things uh, next quarter. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions if anyone has any um, and Natalie, I think you can stop sharing the screen as well. Awesome. Thank you all for, for coming out. I really do appreciate it, getting to hear about your campaigns and even having to recognize, like, maybe not in the face of opposition yet for a campaign, but like defining what those goals are. I really appreciate hearing that. Um, yeah, council members, are there any questions for our amazing CalPERC team? I don't have a question, but thank you so much for coming. Um, I really do appreciate like hearing like the quarterly updates um every quarter and um very happy to be on the resolution later today. Janice? Yeah, um same thing. Really impressed by your work. And um there's actually a committee under SWC that um is called Earth and their focus is about like environmentalism and sustainability, but they're actually looking for things to do because um, the committee has had a hard time with retention over the years. So um, if there's an email that they could reach out to about like collaborating and just ways that um, we could partner, that would be great. Yeah, I'll put my email in the chat. Awesome. And Sarah. Hi, um, thank you guys for the amazing presentation. Um, I really appreciate you guys always coming to council. I was just wondering if there was um, anything specific that like council could do to help support or like any events for winter quarter that you guys would particularly like want us to come to, um, anything like that. Uh, sorry, I was putting this thing in the chat. Um, First of all, thank you. Uh, second of all, I do think um, though pro there probably will be <laughs> stuff in the future. I think right now the only thing uh, for winter quarter that's like planned already is we're having a, a fashion show for our fast fashion campaign. Um, that will be during week three. But I can, uh, I'll, I'll try to be better about um, <laughs> inviting you guys to specific events. That would be cool. Um, because of course we'd love for you to come. Um, and I don't know if uh, I don't know if we necessarily will do any resolutions next quarter, but um, we we always love working with you guys. You guys do so much cool stuff. A lot of it is very like similar and adjacent to the stuff we do. So thank you so much. Awesome. Okay. Well, good luck for finals for you all as well, and I will see you all next time. Thank you, guys. Okay. 
Cool, cool. We're moving into our next section of our agenda, which is going to be our appointments. So we have one appointment for tonight, a very special appointment, is for our budget review director. So just a brief overview of how appointments work. It, the applicant gives a one-minute introduction statement. Um, we go into a brief question answer period. Then they give their one-minute closing statement. Then we deliberate and share any comments, questions, or concerns before we put it to a vote. And then that'll complete the appointments process for today. Um, so with that, our candidate, Iris, um, whenever you're ready to give your one-minute introduction, please start. Yes, yeah, so good evening, Council. Happy week 10. And my Wi-Fi is very crunchy right now, so hopefully nothing goes awry. <laughs> hopefully it don't just suddenly cut out. But yeah, so hi, my name is Iris. I go by she, her pronouns. I am a third year economics major. I am applying for the opportunity to serve as the budget review director. So I'm going to be reflecting a lot of the views expressed in my FICOM appointment. So the three things I want to emphasize is that I would like to bring my dedication to accessibility and equity. So overall, um, my time during um, my time being on USEC Finance can be summarized as I'm very dedicated to assisting people receiving the needed resources that our school has to offer, which is a lot. And um, I also believe that just educating myself and being informed really helps advance equity. And in my previous finance experiences, I conduct very thorough research to best understand to best understand the needs and objectives of each applicant, viewing them as like an individual being, whether it's like through a internet, social media search, or speaking to a representative, who, and they're always very happy to reach out and to talk. And I, through this, I am able to learn a lot about the backgrounds and the barriers that the organizations um, face and the individuals that they serve may face. And this really helps me in acknowledging their needs and adjusting allocations to best address imbalances and um, any social barriers they may face. So therefore, I believe this is very important to help me make very informed budget and um, during my time as BRD, guideline recommendations too. So um, I'm also very committed to checking my forms of communication and just guiding students through finance issues uh, during in my previous time and USAC finance roles really helped me do this and familiar myself with the workflow um, workflow of funding. And I am also I also set up meetings and I give very detailed email responses to any finance inquiries. So um, to close my opening statement, um, I believe that um, my experiences and insight will be very valuable. Um, or especially in BOD when it comes to like um, organizing fund hearings, varying allocations and collating applications. And I'll be able to really effectively address applicant concerns and compile comprehensive reports and help funds stay within budget. And I will really strive to address systemic barriers, which is really just really essential for making recommendations for budgets. And I really strive to continue to educate myself. Amazing. Thank you. Okay, now we will go into questions from council members. Council members, okay, go ahead and we'll start with Sarah. Um, hi, Iris, thank you so much for coming to council. Um, and thank you for taking time out of your week during week 10 um, <laughs> to come here. Anyway, my question is typically we, um, for BOD, we, I have a two part question, one, we, receive a lot um, of funding requests that typically go over the allotment that we have for the quarter. So um, what do, how do you plan on, like, what do you plan on prioritizing when looking at like a wide variety of funding applications? Um, and then my second question is um, there are a lot of like deadlines that are like in close succession for BOD. So can you just also talk about like your time management skills and stuff like that and how that'll help you meet like all those requirements? Of course. So to address your first inquiry, which is um, priority, do you mean that um, what I look for in, in terms of applications and like what I prioritize in funding? Is that what you mean by prioritize? Yes, that's yeah, exactly. Okay, perfect. So in terms of prioritizing, um, I think one thing, 
a few points I want to address upon because there's like many needs that our student body has and like the communities around us has. So first we want to educate ourselves on like um, what's um, like what I say what individuals face certain barriers and like uh, what marginalized communities are there and um, how can we serve them. So that's like um, a that is something um, I do want to prioritize, and especially in terms of our student body. And uh, another thing I want to prioritize is um, community service and how um, this, how much of a service impact this certain um, applicant wants to make on our community, and how many people it can um, affect, and what individuals and the barriers that these individuals. Um, and the barriers that individuals that they serve may face. So yes, yeah, so like um, marginalized communities and service. And I also want in terms of like uh, um, applications that may not focus on those or like such as um, educational initiatives, perhaps these um, initiatives uh, want to apply and fund something that is very, um, has a huge um impact, like a wide scale impact, maybe they're buying equipment that is very tangible and will like have a long lasting effect, will be there, will help the whole department. I believe I funded something like that for my previous experiences. And um, I, I want to also um, touch upon the fact that I do believe funding things like retreats or volunteer um, development are also quite important, though, um, Sure, to be completely honest, funding like a huge initiative compared to like funding a retreat, like those are very different things. But it's also important to know that um to it is also important to, to recognize that student events and activities and retreats are um though they're not prioritized, it is also important to recognize like the effect that they have and how um it can just greatly motivate and um our student body and how it can just uh, create teamwork and more initiative. So it is um, to, yeah, to, so <laughs> to summarize my long response of service, uh, looking at the needs of our student body, education, those are very important, but it's also important to like recognize the importance of other things that may fall out of this category. All right, I apologize for the very long response, but moving on to your second question. Um, for very close deadlines, that is something I'm actually familiar with because I am the current chair of SFS. So rolling basis weekly thing to do. So um, in order to stay organized for that, it's I think consistency is very important. So we meet every single week and um, so get this done by a certain time and make sure uh, to send reminders before that. So very consistent. And um, two other important factors that lead to um, making sure that that close deadlines are carried out is um, A, maintaining open channel communication. So uh, I, I call my community members um, over the phone uh, to discuss issues and we have a um, group chat. So just making sure that people you work with, you are in consistent communication with and that I am easy to reach. And the B, the second thing is that I also wanna stay organized. So I implemented like a grading system, a spreadsheet that's quite easy to look at and quite easy to keep track of. So yeah, uh, I wish I could have con condensed my answer into a shorter response, but yeah, that was my answer. <laughs> no, thank you so much. That was super helpful. <laughs> okay, moving to Gabby. Hi, Iris. Um, it's nice to meet you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I was wondering if you can please elaborate a little more on your experiences in regards to budgeting um, like or funding, financing, stuff like that. And then what specific skills or what did you learn in the past through those positions that will help you for this position? Oh, of course. So in terms of like budgeting for like a single organization, I was, um, I guess, my first finance experience was like being like the finance director for like the pre-law society. So like a few hundred members. So that's like a, my how I started off doing like internal budgeting and then moving on to like USAC finance risk experiences this is where I really got to learn about the workflow of USAC finance and um just stretch like extending my skills outside of just internal budgeting so in terms of like reviewing applications and all that and my two to three major roles is that I am on the finance I am um well I 
or was a finance is a will a current I'm not sure how to uh, what tends to use um, I am a finance associate on the finance committee, and um, I am the director of finance for CSC, and I am the chair of um, SFS. So those are like my two to three um, most uh, relevant experiences. So therefore, I'm very familiar with the workflow of funding from applications to grading to community deliberations to um, just answering questions rec forms, um, processing. So those are the main things that I deal with. And um, because of that, I think in when applying these skills to BRD, I think, um, of course, reviewing applications, I know like exactly, not exactly, there's never an exactly, I know like exact, I know kind of what to look for and what to, um, prioritize in terms of like efficiently reviewing applications and teaching other people how to follow this process, like um, what makes a good documentation. And I think uh, my organization skills will also be helpful in terms of like the compiling reports and helping people like with line item information and just fund hearings in general. So um, yeah, so I think overall, um, I have some quite a few relevant experiences, and I'm confident with my abilities in carrying out all these tasks. I hope that answers your question. Um, is there anything else I should elaborate on? Um, no, that was perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, and our last question will be Tara. Can y'all hear me? Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, given the current state of like perpetual racial inequities in funding as a whole at UCLA, how do you hope to make sure that racially mar marginalized groups have equal access to a lot of the funding sources coming out of USAC, especially the communities that don't really engage with USAC that much? Um, and then I guess like a two part of that, um, what's your understanding of the mother orgs and their annual programming? Yes, yeah, so uh, I think to really start off with the first question, it's really major and really prevalent issues. And I'm glad you brought it up. And it's um, very difficult because it's so just like rooted in what's going on to um, address uh, through like simple processes. So um, what I noticed is that a lot of works and not just, and especially just like in general, and especially works that are like unrepresented, I belong to like underrepresented communities, they don't really know like what is, what funding bodies are that. That is like one of the biggest questions that um, applicants come forward with me, especially when I am unable to provide them with the sufficient funds they need. And I say, I always tell them like, I'm sorry that um, it may, our decision may come as a disappointment and that uh, we are unable to provide, because I am SFS, it's a supplemental fund, I can't give that much. But um, I'm happy to like let you know what other funding bodies are there to help you apply, to give you feedback on your application. And that's and they always say, yeah, I don't know like what funding bodies are out there. Can you like tell me? So I think um, to really begin with, I think it's really important to like let other like just like uh, really push um, the information of like what we have and what resources we have um, and, and give it to provide these orgs. Um, this information or maybe uh, provide uh, like for example for their these orgs as, um, like their finance directors let them know like what's out there and to like provide like a proper comprehensive guidebook or um, or an orientation I'm not sure but like it's good to I think it's really important that uh, these people will know what is out there and, and especially in when, like identifying groups that are usually not as well funded so I think um, that is something to strive for in my opinion just um, like a compiled source of information that would tell then we should reach out to these orgs and give them this information about how to apply for funding what makes a good application what is documentation and what bodies are there for them to apply to and my second uh, and your and to address your second question um in terms of like the mother org like um i am familiar with like like under USAC, there's like certain funds under my UCLA, there's like another portal you have to apply to and there's like soul funds and um there's 
yeah, so soul funds is like CAC stuff and SGA is like contingencies, um, CS mini, TGIF. There's also, I think like a third main body is the community programs office. Um, and there's also more like more funding too. There's like ASUCLA. I'm not sure if that addresses your question. Is that what you mean by mother orgs? Or like, should I elaborate on like what these orgs do? Um, the mother orgs are like um, historical, cultural, like BIPOC orgs that exist at UCLA. But oh, a lot okay. of them have annual programs that happen throughout the year that require USAC money. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought you meant, sorry, I thought you meant like mother orgs as in like mother orgs of the funding bodies. So I apologize for that. But yeah, um, I have been, um, yeah, thank you for elaborating on that. And I have been quite, because like I reviewed um, especially applications for service orgs, I am quite familiar with um, what um, organizations are out there that has served different parts of our um, community. And I am, Especially, um, I am, I do strive to like educate myself on like uh, the mother orgs that you uh, that you're talking about, and um, to learn more about uh, what other like organizations, um, especially organizations that do not receive as much funding, and I do strive to learn more about them, and um, yeah, um, does that kind of address your question? Okay, um, so we'll go ahead and have you move forward with your one minute concluding statement. Okay, sorry, I'm reading the chat. All right, got it. All right, thank you, Tara. All right, so, um, all right, so I would like to emphasize my dedication to transparency. And um, I think I told this story during my finance associate appointment, but um, my interest in USAC finance was actually sparked because of when I was a uh, like a major contributor to a, um, a daily brewing investigation on USAC fund. So um, since entering these positions, I've been very passionate about just detailed documentation, full transparency, and just proper reporting. And um, for example, in order to um, ensure um, these initiatives, I have updated and enforced SFA guidelines so that everything is well documented. And I've also like implemented like a new system for grading and where all my, my community members leave very detailed comments. And um, I'm very responsive to email and I provide detailed feedback and all my, I encourage all my applicants to view allocation details and to ask questions and receive feedback. So if, if anyone's watching, please reach out to me through email. I am very quick at that. And I'm very willing to provide explanations for decisions. And um, I will, I'm dedicated to guiding organizations, organizations to what they need. So, and I bring this dedication to the BRDA position and I will be very organized and ensure that all budgets are sufficiently documented. And of course, in accordance with university ACCLA regulations. And to add on, um, I will be very um, transparent in my own affiliations. And uh, for example, whenever I grade something or like that I've previously seen or I've like, I may be involved in it, um, I always like reach out to the chair. Hey, this is what I, this is like, by the way, this is what's going on. And I make my involvement very clear to those around me and take all steps necessary to contribute to um, transparency. And um, I am also very dedicated to um, re carefully researching the needs of my applicants and to just generally help those around me. And I want to teach people, um, especially those who are very unfamiliar with just the funding or have a hard time accessing it on the new and old resources that are available on campus. And they're just, um, and overall, I think the my I want to conclude with by saying that I really want to best direct people to the help they need. Okay, thank you so much. 
All right, so now we'll move to a brief deliberation period. Um, council, are there any comments, questions, and last minute concerns before we vote? Okay. I I just want to confirm. So if um Iris is appointed for um the budget review director, will she be um asked to step down from uh, her FICOM position only or all of her other um positions, including um a CSE staff member? If that CSE staff member is a um if it is a step in the position, I believe she will have to step down from that. May I? Yeah, Iris. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm stipend and shying because I don't receive any stipends. I'm not sure if I'm like counted as stipend. Yeah, Iris, Iris is. Wait, Iris, you were stipended by uh Ficom, right? Yeah, so she doesn't yes, stipend for CSC. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm only stipended for Ficom, to my understanding. Okay, uh, Jonathan, Jessica, do you see any conflict there then? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, it's it's just mainly that you cannot, uh, no member can receive more than one stipend from USA. So um, if you're, uh, if you are appointed to budget review director, then um, if you want to be hired into that position and stipend in there, you would not be able to receive your stipend any longer from the finance committee. That is completely fine with me. And that's reasonable. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay. Thank you. Um, so hopefully that answers that one. And then Sarah. Um, I just wanted to say I have now conducted multiple interviews with Iris as a result of, um, ARC, um, and I very much approve her appointment for BOD. I think she'd be a great addition. Um, and I'm not only saying that cause we like, we need someone to fill this position, but I think she'd be like amazing at it nonetheless. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. And last but not least, Alicia. Thank you for your interview, Iris. Um, I just wanted to say, sorry, my roommate's in the back. Um, I just wanted to say, like, um, if you need any like help um getting to know like the mother orgs, um, please reach out like to me or to Tyra or to anyone else um in the coalition. Um, it's really important as like BRD to know um about the orgs. Um, so yeah, just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Yes, definitely. Oh, sorry to interrupt. But yeah, so yes, definitely. Um, I was actually going to ask if I could reach out to someone about that or to like meet um representatives from these mother orgs if I have the fortune of being in the position because I am quite familiar with a lot of like the student orgs, but I think it is definitely important to be very familiar with the mother orgs. Yeah, so thank you for saying that. And thank you for reaching out. Thank you. Okay, if there aren't any other questions or concerns, let's have a motion. Did you want to hear ARC? Oh yeah, my bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh wow. Um, ARC voted Iris with a three to zero to zero vote and our statement reads, Iris is a very qualified candidate for this position. She did not hesitate to apply after learning about this position and did very thorough research for her interview. As someone in multiple positions related to finance and USAC funding, we believe she has a very clear understanding of the larger picture of USAC um, and our processes. Her dedication exceeds expectations for this position. And with this said, ARC would like to recommend Iris with a three to zero to zero vote. Thank you so much, Ark. Appreciate it. And now, can I have a motion? My motion to approve Iris for the budget review director position for a one year term. I second. second. Megan motions, Jonathan seconds. All of our please raise your hand. Okay, please lower your hands. All against, please raise your hands. All abstaining, please raise your hands. Move for 11 to 0 to 0 vote. That is approved. Congratulations, Iris. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for taking the time to interview, to interview me during week 10. Good luck on finals, everyone. <laughs> thank you for coming. OK, amazing. All right, we're moving into next session, which is officer reports. Um, 
they are on the document, but a couple quick things. Um, we conducted some interviews for the UCPD chief. Um, basically, I feel like my life is just a lot of search committees at the moment. Um, we are starting our interviews for the Dean of Students search committees. That should be wrapping up in January. Um, had another meeting with for the Chancellor search committee as well. Um, I'm preparing for a financial aid advocacy through the LINK program. Um, I had a meeting with the Association of the Big Ten students. Um, we had a president's meeting there um, discussing various things on our campuses and getting prepared for their annual conference that I might be attending. I'm just seeking more details about that. Um, met with a couple different student groups um, to talk about various concerns. And then also have different meetings lined up for collaborations for winter quarter. So if you would like to plan anything, now is the time to get on my radar. Um, so definitely reach out, text me, message me, Slack me, email me, whatever works for y'all. Um, we, the UC president, uh, the UC undergraduate presidents have a meeting with President Michael Drake this Thursday, wish us the best of luck. Um, went to a meeting with Tyra and others for the art our JN campaign. And then um, we are preparing some events for finals week. So be on the lookout for muffins in Yerba May on um, probably Monday and Tuesday of next week. And I'm passing it off to Megan. Um, just a very short um, report, but um, Josh attended another Tribune's Raise Award ceremony planning meeting. Um, so we're almost done planning with that. We're just going to book the Kirkhoff Grand Salon. Um, True Bruin Raise Award nominations are out, so please nominate a Bruin who has exemplified the True Bruin values to help another Bruin in crisis. Nominations are due January 25th at 11.59, and then you can find the link um, on, on the Instagram, on the IVP Instagram, and in my report. Um, I had Josh attend the RGN campaign meeting. Um, thank you to Tyra for hosting. We can definitely help out with any like social media stuff and any other initiatives as well. Um, congratulations to Katie Fang on your design being picked for the ASCCLA t-shirt contest design. Um, we can't wait to see it in the UCLA store next quarter. Um, we did not hold our all staff meeting, but we did hold like office hours for our office for like any directors to come talk about like any concerns or like um, any help for the initiatives. Um, I attended the OFSL meeting, uh, all council presence meeting today with End Overdose, where we discussed ways to reach out to like Greek organizations about Narcan training and accessibility. Um, we're working on outreaching to professional fraternity council as well. Um, I attended Genesis um, fall quarter town hall. So thank you, Genesis, for hosting. You did an amazing job um, facilitating the conversation. Um, and as always, we want to like support and we'd love to help with any initiatives that result in that. Um, I'm still working on the Seek Heritage Month resolution, action items, um, community building with any other UC like IVPs and at, like EVPs, um, just to discuss all the different things going on, on our campus right now, our campuses. Um, and then I'm also researching like past USAC resolutions and like re con reconfirmation and like a repassing, I guess. Um, there are other things, but I just can't remember. But I think that's it. Oh, I also have like a freebie, like finals freebie thing going on either this Friday or yeah, I think it's this Friday. That's it. Thank you, Eva. Hi everyone. Um, happy Tuesday. Um, all my updates are on the doc, but I did want to highlight a few things. Uh, first, um, we're still looking for recruits for the Students of Color Conference. Um. That's January 26th through 28th. This is like literally just an all expenses paid trip for you to meet uh, students of color at other UCs. So um, if that seems interesting to you, um, please, please attend. Um, I emailed everyone on council um, the details and a flyer to send out to your offices. Um, so please distribute it. Um, I definitely would love to see more like USAC wide support and EVP and UCSA um, events and conferences. Um, so your your support there would be really, really appreciated. Um, we've been having a few, we had like two state level lobby meetings and three local level lobby meetings uh, within the past week. So um, we've been very, very busy. Um, so um, that being said, we'll also be starting our lobby core um, in the winter quarter. So um, be on the lookout if you want to go to Sacramento with us um, through that. 
And last quick thing I wanted to highlight um, was that we've been uh, continuing admin meetings, trying to implement um, a collegiate recovery program. And uh, so we met with um, ABC Seplo and Dr. Green. We had a few follow-up meetings. Um, and based on UCLA's like historical allocation of money towards CRP, it's like we're kind of encountering some difficulties, but um, I'm not, I haven't really lost hope. I think it's definitely something that we can do to help Bruins in recovery. Um, and that was, this is again in reference to a resolution that we passed through USAC um, about like a month and a half ago. Um, I think that's mainly it for me. Everything else is on the dock, but please um, spread the word about the Students of Color Conference. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, now going to our gen reps, we have Katie. Is Katie here? Yeah. Yep. Hi, guys. Um, hi, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Uh, so uh, a couple of people in my office, most of my things have been in the written report. However, I'm just, something's going on with my doc, so I'm going to be fixing that during the meeting. But um, a couple of people in my office attended the US, at USC the Cal-UCLA water polo game, um, and we focused on the players afterwards, and we're going to be starting an initiative a uh, winter quarter, just getting the word out about um, more sports that are, like, aren't, aren't football and aren't basketball to try to get students to encourage them to show up to sports that, because um, I don't know if you guys know, but we were in the championship game this past weekend against Cal. So we're going to be starting an initiative just like reporting on these um, different sport opportunities we have uh, that don't have to do with our mainstream, uh, mainstream sports. Um, and the rest of me on my doc, I hope everyone's doing well finals and taking care of themselves. Okay, now we'll go to Jonathan. Oh, wait, I'm General Representative yeah. 3, sorry. Gabby, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, I have everything pretty much um, written out on the doc, but one thing that I do want to mention um, is I'm in the process of creating a mental health resource fair that I hope I will launch in winter quarter. Um, so I have a few organizations and clubs that deal with mental health written down and that I will be reaching out to. But if you um, work with or know specifically um, any clubs or organizations that would be interested in tabling, please, please reach out to me. Um, this is something that I'm really passionate about um, and I really hope to see it through. So please let me know if you want to collaborate or again, if you know any clubs or orgs that would be willing to table. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, okay, now it's time. All righty. Well, um, yeah, I have a couple updates. Um, as always, they're in my written reports, but I just wanted to shout some out. Um, so um, the presentation for digital the digital brewing card USAC survey that thank you to all of those who filled it out is being moved to week one winter. My director was very busy, so unfortunately she wasn't able to get that going. Um, I'm very excited that I'll be hopefully meeting with uh, administrators, like uh, higher end administrators before the end of the quarter to discuss next steps about the successful Latinx, um, the support for the Latinx Support Center resolution. So I'm very excited about that. Um, I'm collaborating with Berkeley ASUC senators to discuss the, again, a uh, dual message for, um, for both of our respective groups. Um, I'm working on onboarding my new staff. I'm very excited that my office is growing. Um, we also have launched our campus-wide brewing card survey. So please, 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 I implore you to spread the word. Thank you, Naomi. I saw I saw that you posted both of our posts. So thank you. Um, the, we are having an inter internship information session. Um, these internships are very great opportunities for all students. You don't have to be Hispanic identifying. Um, they're both in the corporate world and the federal field. So those are very great opportunities for students to take advantage of. Um, I was at that meeting with the, um, about RJN as well, and I'm excited to support. And I'm also very grateful for Tyra extending an invitation for um, me to be able to collaborate with the Afro-Caribbean, Afro-Latina Week. So I'm very excited to do that. Um, and yeah, my office has been uh, doing a lot of work, uh, but I did want to also... Um, provide a statement about what happened with the Daily Bruin um, on behalf of a, a student journalist who would like me to voice these their concerns. Um, 
Oh, the, um, and this anonymous source um, was confided in me, wanted me to verbalize this to the general public. Although the anonymous source is confident that the Daily Bruin can deal with this issue internally, the recent events con concerning Eli's firing have made this an issue to be addressed within the public forum. The anonymous source further implores members of the Daily Bruin editorial staff, as well as the ASUCLA Communications Board, to come with a clear consensus on how the policy for conflict of interest will work in avoiding stifling journalistic voices and, more importantly, avoid conflating ideology with identity. They further advise that such a topic is discussed in an open forum with Daily Bruin writers, allowing individuals to voice any existing concerns. As a student journalist myself and the managing editor for La Gente, it is vitally important to have these conversations and ensure that we're verbalizing what's going on within our journalistic community on campus. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, now, thanks to John said, having some Wi-Fi connection issues, but all the written updates are on the document. So we will go ahead to Mason. Hi everyone. Um, most of my stuff is on the document. So I'll just say like a couple of quick things. Um, our last event of the quarter is this week. We have Noon Tunes on Thursday um, at noon, obviously, at the Kirkhoff patio. So very excited about that, but also very sad. Last event of the quarter. Um, but we also are rebranding Noon Tunes like after this quarter. So that's coming soon next quarter. We're really excited for that. So this is the last Noon Tunes of its kind. So that's why you should come. Um, past events that we've had have been really successful. We went or we had Groove Garden, our first vinyl DJ concert very exciting our cc and swc petting zoo was really really cute and amazing like it was just amazing like shout out to jenis for helping us collab on that like that was amazing new tunes will probably still be called new tunes like the rebrand won't be that deep jonathan i'm so sorry but it'll be like the vibe will be different um and yeah we had our holiday screening today of elf um so that was really cute and fun and lastly, the rest of it's on the document, but I talked to um, Tyra today about some potential um, ASU collabs with CSE that will probably be coming in um, winter quarter in February. So yeah, very exciting. Thank you everyone and good luck on finals. Thank you. Can we get a Beyonce screening on campus? <laughs> oh, <that's it. laughs> but moving on. Let me call her. <laughs> Here we go to um, Community Service Commissioner Chia Ying. Hi everyone, I hope your week 10 is going well. Um, just one announcement for, for me today. Um, CSE is collaborating with UNICEF and UCLA Recreation Leadership Council to organize a donation drive in support of a, um, the International Rescue Committee for their upcoming holiday bazaar. So this will benefit refugees from Latin America, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Ukraine. Um, so we are accepting physical donations and virtual donations. Uh, physical donations can be dropped off at Wooden. We are accepting pots and pans, lightly used uh, winter clothes, jackets, scarves, gloves, blankets, and dinnerware, um, all the way through finals uh, Wednesday of finals week. And for vir virtual donations, um, you can Venmo any amount to at UNICEF underscore UCLA. And at the end of finals week, we're going to bring all of the items um, to International Rescue Committee to give up to um, the family. So please um, help to repost, uh, spread it to your friends, and um, yeah, and just join us in um, giving back this holiday season. Yeah, that's all for me. Thank you so much. Okay, now moving to Alicia. Um, yeah, um, most of my updates are on my um, document, but I can go ahead and say them out loud really quickly. Our last event tomorrow, oh, thank God, <laughs> I'm so tired, is our Mindful Mediums event. Um, and we're going to have like an art-based um, event of like just making with what we have, like all the materials we have. And then um, the second half is a sound bath, like sound bowl session that we're going to have with an indigenous artist coming in. Uh, so from six to eight, because Word on Wednesday wasn't able to, um, wasn't able to direct an event tomorrow. So we're gonna have concerts and art series, um, spearhead mindful mediums um, at the gallery. Um, we will also have um, our first podcast coming up. It's an interview with me tea with CAC and um it is led by our internship series um have is that um part our director uh, 
I mean, like what collabs we're gonna have in between like series. So that's really exciting. It includes like a gallery um, between art series and hip hop Congress for Black History Month, which is also Hip Hop Appreciation Month. Um, our first newsletter was posted last week, which was really exciting. We had five events last week um, and they all went really well. Um, and um, what's it called? We received our merchandise for our Hot Lotties event really late, but now people are able to pick it up. Um, my admin team is working on our our fall staff, re- fall staff, winter staff retreat for next quarter. Um, we're also like really pushing to reach out to potential sponsorships, um, sponsorship opportunities so that we can get um, HHC and JRF like more financially stable or available even so that's really um pressing for us uh we also are almost finalized we almost finalized our jazz reggae fest logo which is really exciting it's really cool um last thing i'll say um is that i'm working with gsa to work on something to um support the palestinian student body um and a muslim student body um i'm also um gonna echo like what Jonathan sent, mentioned um and I don't think I, I wasn't able to come to public comment earlier but um I do want to echo that like Daily Bruins um like treatment of their staff should be investigated um and that should have never happened to Eli um I'll leave it at that um what's it called my last update yeah I'm working with Tyra on like some collaborations as well and I was also in attendance for the RJN meeting last Friday I think that's all I have thank you okay uh Evan unfortunately is not here so we'll be moving to Sarah okay uh moving to Jenna's Hi everyone, um, happy week 10. Um, I think Megan and Mason have already talked about it, but um, SWT had a really successful final week. Um, we had two hours ago our fall town hall where we talked about um, our individual wellness and also um, Israel-Palestine and how that has showed up for everyone in their lives and their health and um just like a call for ideas on what swc can do and then also turn into a bit of a discussion on usac um if we ever have something like this in the future i know i didn't give very much notice but um i think a lot of the folks were interested in seeing usac faces there so um i will extend another invite for next quarters but instead there is um there are minutes that my staff took so i'll drop them in the chat but yeah there are a lot of different topics unfortunately i i was gonna add it as a discussion item for um later in this meeting but i'm a little cut short for um finals going on but we should definitely consider in the future doing another like kind of usac wide um statement or a safety town hall i think that's what a lot of folks were reporting on that they would really love to see and yeah, the petting zoo was really successful. Thank you, CEC. Shout out Mason for collaborating. And thank you, Naomi and Megan for coming to the town hall today. And we are just continuing to wrap up the quarter. Yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's move to Tara. Okay, I'm really tired right now. So I'm gonna try to go fast. Actually, I'm going to go fast because I'm tired, but um, my office has a lot in the works for this quarter and next quarter. Tomorrow, we're having our Winter Wonderland study hall at the Transfer Center. We have Christmas-themed snacks and some hot drinks like hot chocolate, tea, and coffee. Um, we also are going to be giving out donuts and scantrons on, oof, I don't even know what day that is, but next Tuesday at the transfer center as well from 12 to 1. Um, on Thursday, I'll be going to the ASU Pan-African Karamu, which is a Kwanzaa celebration. Y'all should stop by if y'all can. 
Um, next quarter, we're also going to be collaborating with Adam's office to host an international student gala, maybe potentially in collaboration with Dash U and at the Dash U Center. Um, we also are uh, planning to give out a transfer climate survey, hopefully by the end of this quarter, maybe beginning of winter, just to see where the transfer community is at with different needs such as housing, transportation, classes. Um, child care, funding, all that good stuff. Um, and that will be kind of like a, ooh, I don't know what to say. I think across the UC system, they're just really bad at um, keeping information and data about transfer students. So in order to access that data, you can come up with your own, I guess. So that's what that is there for. And then I did meet with all of y'all to go over the RJ and stuff. If you have not reposted the RJN post, please repost it. Um, I saw Jonathan had reposted. I saw Alicia had reposted, I think, and some other people I can't remember. But please, 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 please like and repost. Um, going to clean up those notes because I never did and they look terrible. But if y'all all go on the Black History Month document that I shared with y'all, y'all, it's on the bottom page. Um, and I did have a meeting with Eva and her staff today to go over RJN and um, different ways that we can work together as a council to make sure our Black students feel represented and safe at UCLA and beyond. Um, and I will stop there. But happy finals, and I hope y'all do well. Thank you. And Adam? Hey, everyone. Uh, just a couple of updates. I met with Clara from Caltrig last week on Wednesday. We discussed some of our initiatives and how we can support each other moving forward. Um, we're continuing our work on our various initiatives, including those with UCLA Dining, Bruin Bills, uh, Bruin Bodies, and everything else. Um, as Tara mentioned, we're working with the TSR office for an international student event in January. Um, we're still accepting our staff applications. There's a couple of positions we're looking to fill. And we're continuing our work with the UCSA International Student Coalition. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, now let's go into admin reports. Let's see, Jessica. Or sorry, Orlando. Yeah, my bad. No, I'm here. I'm here. Hello, everyone. How are you all doing? Um, I have a few updates. These are more in the future sort of updates, but I do want to put them on your radar screen. Um, for those that you may know that forgot to uh, re-register their organization, not you, I've been working with your offices, but other RCOs um, or any organization that wants to start, um, that will open up the beginning of winter quarter um, and we will. And more information will come. I also wanted to point out that our campus programs uh, regular fund and our campus programs committee youth fund um, will be due on Mar uh, excuse me, January 4th. That's the week before classes began. So it's sort of that gray period. Um, I just want to put on anyone's radar if they were planning on applying that uh, for any uh, winter quarter programming. Um, but that's all I have. And um, just want to say, uh, hope uh, final study is going well and the best of luck. Thank you. And now moving to Jessica. Hello, everybody. Uh, so just a quick couple quick things. Um, first, if you have any major events coming up in the next two quarters, uh, we definitely should meet um, to go over planning and coordination. So um, for JRF, for example, uh, Alicia, if you can put your uh, team in contact with Emily, our student union admin, um, I know she's trying to get a meeting coordinated for that just so we can be on the same page, go over your budget, um, any logistics that we need to start working on to get everything up and running. Um, so just to have that on everybody's radar. Um, the other thing that I wanted to also give a quick reminder on, so for the universal funding um, allocation sheet that you all are using that's linked in the agenda weekly, um, just a friendly reminder to please try to populate that ahead of the meeting, it really should be filled out and completed by the time that the agenda gets sent out to everybody so that folks have time to review. Um, but, you know, if your funding body um, happens to be 
continuing to process those allocations through the weekend, just get them in as soon as possible so that folks have time to review. Um, what we want to make sure is that, um, you know, before council is approving funding, that um, the, you know, the allocations that are in the sheet are, uh, you know, in, in line with your funding guidelines um, and that there's nothing um, out of the ordinary because once it gets to SGA, um, you know, it's, it's, harder to then tell an organization that, oh, sorry, you, you're not actually eligible for this funding. Um, so, you know, just as a quick example, Orlando mentioned some groups are needing to still re-register through SOUL. Um, so we did have um, an allocation come through for an organization that was not registered. So um, those are just things to keep an eye out for as you're um, completing your allocation sheets and as you're looking through and approving funding week to week. Um, but we'll go ahead and do another training, like recap once we get to winter quarter, just as a refresher. Um, also along those lines, uh, you know, if there's anything else that you all feel you need a refresher on, um, please, you know, if you want to send it in the chat or Slack us, um, we will be putting together some trainings um, in fall just as, you know, refreshers for everybody um, on various things just to get you through the next quarter and a half. We also have, you know, OSAC allocations that will be coming up soon. So a lot of things going on um, once we come back from break that we'll want to make sure that we're ready to go. So our team's here and available to support. Um, we will all be here uh, post finals week. So if anybody is still around and wants to come by and meet or meet via Zoom, let us know. Um, and other than that, good luck on finals. Uh, come by uh, next week. Study Break Cafe in the Bruin Fun Zone is going to have coffee, snacks, free uh, blue books and scantrons for students. So if you happen to be around next week and you want a little study break, um, swing by the union. Thanks. Amazing. Okay, let's go to Lori. Um, I'm just going to plug for Evan because he's not here, but... Uh... He has study nights in Poly Monday through Wednesday next week, seven to midnight. So if you need a spot to study, come by. There's coffee and drinks available. Um, and other than that, good luck on your finals. Enjoy your break. If you need a good binge, I recommend Lessons in Chemistry and Buccaneers on Apple TV. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Okay. And Jonathan. Hey, hi, hello, folks. Uh, congrats on getting to your last meeting of the quarter. Um, I know that this quarter has had a lot of ups and downs, we'll say. So um, very, very much an accomplishment um, and very proud of all of you for your leadership this quarter. Um, just a couple things from me. Uh, uh, the ASUCA holiday party is on Thursday. Um, if you're around from, I think it's two o'clock. I think, yeah, two o'clock to four-ish or five, something, come around, um, free food, you know. Um, and then uh, just a, a reminder, I sent an email out, but to um, check your mailboxes um, and to start utilizing the uh, SGA mailbox or the FICOM mailbox if you have physical recs. Um, and that's it. Have a safe and lovely break. Um, I will be here through the 22nd which is the friday after finals and return on the third i believe which is like a wednesday or something like that so um we'll be around for a good good portion of break um like jessica said if you need us let us know and good luck on finals thank you okay that wraps up our reports Let's go into new business, a resolution to endure CCLA commitment to 100% clean energy by 2035. Uh, since Evan is not here, are our Calpert people still here? Question mark? Yes. Clara is here. If she would Clara, like can... to say yeah. something about the resolution or like give a summary. Okay. Yeah, give us like a brief um, of the resolution. Okay, cool. Let me know if this is not what you would like. But um, basically, uh, it's a resolution supporting UCLA um, to adopt a timeline of 2035 to commit to 100% renewable energy. Um, like I mentioned during the like update presentation we did, um, UCLA is doing a decarbonization study this year. It says this in the resolution. Um, so they're figuring out ways that are 
like feasible and good for the university to transition to renewable energy. Um, the UC Office of the President is directing all the UCs to at least get to 90% renewable energy by 2045. Um, but we know that the task force is investigating ways to do more and buy sooner. Um, so this is just uh, like, it's not a specific date based off of the study results yet. Um, it's based off of what students are advocating for and voicing support for. So uh, I have no idea if we're supposed to read the resolution out loud, but the summary of what it says is like beginning part is basically talks about what I said. Um, there's some general information about like climate change impact. Um, there's some stuff about what UCLA has committed to in the past. Um, and then it basically says that USAC would support uh, UCLA committing by 2035. Um, and then there's a second action item about um, like outreach uh, via social media and stuff. Um, there's going to be some town halls and things of that nature next quarter um, to try to get the community input. So just helping with that. Um, yeah, I don't know if that was what I was to say, but. <laughs> That's what oh, they're absolutely doing. perfect. Okay. Um, yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much for a brief summary. Yeah. Um, since it was on the agenda, I'm assuming you all read it, but go ahead. And for folks that do need a moment to go ahead and look through it, if you do have any questions, um, this would be the time to kind of do so. Um, but Megan brought brings up a good point. We need to vote to make an action item. So can I have a motion to make this resolution an action item so we can vote on it. I motion to make the resolution to endorse UCLA's commitment to 100% clean energy by 2035 an action item. Second. Okay. Okay. Making motions, Gabby, seconds, all in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, please lower your hands. All against, please raise your hands. All abstaining, please raise your hands. We'll have a 10 to 0 to 0 vote. Um, that's approved. So now it is an action item. So we can vote on that. Does anybody need more time to look through it? OK. If not, let's go ahead and put it to a vote. Can I have a motion? I motion to make uh, to vote on the resolution to endorse UCLA's commitment to 100% clean energy by 2035. I second. I second. Make a motion, Jonathan seconds. So on favor, please raise your hands. Okay, please lower your hands. All against, please raise your hands. All abstaining, please raise your hands. I'm saying okay so 11 to 0 to 1 vote that is approved thank you all for your time okay this meeting is now adjourned at 8 39 p.m like I said I hope you all have an amazing time on your break um good luck on finals and let me know if you need anything